In the fall of 1912, Theodore Roosevelt was running for his third term as president in the Bull Moose Party. On October 14th of that year, Roosevelt arrived in Milwaukee to give a speech. After eating at the Gilpatrick Hotel, he went to the car that was to take him to the auditorium where he would give his speech. Surrounding his car was a crowd that had come to see the former president. Before getting in, Roosevelt bowed to acknowledge the cheers. However, what he didn't see was a man aiming a revolver at him. This was John Schrank, a man who was opposed to Roosevelt running for a third term and claimed to have been visited in a dream by the deceased president, William McKinley. He claimed McKinley had told him that Roosevelt was his murderer and ordered Schrank to avenge his death. Standing in the crowd, John Schrank pulled the trigger and shot Roosevelt, penetrating his overcoat and ripping through the right side of his chest. How did Roosevelt survive? He had two items in his breast pocket, a 50-page manuscript of the speech he was planning to deliver, and his metal glasses case. The two possessions absorbed the impact of the bullet and saved Roosevelt's life. After being hit, Roosevelt simply tottered a bit and fell into the car seat beneath him. Albert Martin, Roosevelt's stenographer and former football player, immediately jumped out of the car and stopped Shrank from firing again. Surprisingly, Roosevelt had mercy on his attempted assassin, saying, He doesn't know what he is doing. Don't strike the poor creature. After Shrank was in police custody, Theodore Roosevelt was urged to go to the hospital. He refused, insisting that he deliver his speech despite still having the bullet in him. Upon arriving at Milwaukee Auditorium, he started off his speech with, Friends, I shall ask you to be as quiet as possible. I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. The bullet is in me now, so that I cannot make a very long speech, but I will try my best. Despite claiming not to be able to make a very long speech, Roosevelt spoke for over an hour. When he was finally done, he was somewhat shaky due to the loss of blood. Afterwards, Teddy Roosevelt was taken to a hospital in Milwaukee, then later moved to Chicago's Mercy Hospital. After being monitored for a few days, the doctors decided that it would be better not to remove the bullet. Roosevelt was released from the hospital after a week and was back to campaigning on October 30th, only 16 days after being shot. After the incident, John Schrank was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and was committed to an institution for the criminally insane, where he spent the rest of his days. However, Roosevelt questioned this diagnosis in a letter he wrote later on, saying, He was not really a madman at all. He was a man of the same disordered brain that most criminals, and a great many non-criminals, have. He had quite enough sense to avoid shooting me in any southern state where he would have been lynched, and waited until he got into a state where there was no death penalty. I have not the slightest feeling against him. I have a very strong feeling against the people who, by their ceaseless and intemperate abuse, excited him to the action. If you enjoy learning about history, please check out my short histories playlist shown on screen. In this series, I summarize historical events in 1-5 to five minutes. Please also consider subscribing.